Well, first of all, good morning, everyone, for joining with me for this pruning. I love to prune, uh, but actually, we really don't need to prune. I know that's it's a myth because uh, nature does its own pruning. If there is a weak uh, branch somewhere, then uh, it will just be uh, broken off, and that is the pruning that nature does. But we like to control our plants, and uh, we only have so much room, so pruning is what we do. Actually, today is a wonderful day to be pruning. It's uh, gorgeous out, and when I'm done here, I'm going to go out in my own garden and prune my own roses. So, first of all, when you get ready to prune, you need to get organized. And that is with everything that you do, you have to get your tools together and you have to be safe doing whatever you're doing. I brought a lot of stuff today, go through it real quick, and uh, then we can do the actual pruning. Um, gloves, definitely all kinds. This is um, actually pruning gloves, they're kit gloves. Um, they're not supposed to uh, let the uh, thorns go through, but thorns have a way of uh, finding their way. Uh, different tools, different pruning tools. Uh, all of them are fine. Uh, if you buy cheap ones, you're gonna be repeat buying them and buying them and buying them. Buy good pruning shears, take care of them and they'll last you a lifetime. Um, I recommend bypass pruners that go past so it will not crush like this pruner will. It crushes, so I do not recommend this one. I just brought it to show. Uh, you need a holder and you can hook it onto your belt or you can hook it on to uh, your your pants, whatever you're wearing. And um, you can get two of them in here if you get a double one. Um, safety glasses, definitely. If you're not wearing glasses, safety glasses is a must because when you're bending down and you're not paying attention, invariably the roses will get to you and they'll stick you in the eye. That's not a good idea. You'll need larger pruners when you have these huge roses, uh, climbing roses that you will find in your yard that have you have no idea what they are, but you want to get to clean them up. Larger pruners, you can get right into that even bigger ones to get even further inside. So you may want to invest in at least one pair. This is my favorite, I always bring it. It's a reciprocating side and you can get way inside instead of having hand saws, you wanna go in there and it's like all of the work for you. Maybe your husband or boyfriend has one in his uh, garage can borrow it. And of course you will need some sharpening tools. There are different, many different kinds. I'm just going through it real quick so we can spend more time with the pruning. This is easy. Get yourself a pair of pruners that are comfortable in your hands. Ladies, your hands are smaller. And the manufacturers have now caught on. It's not just the men that are pruning, it's women as well. So our hands are smaller, so you wanna get smaller ones because large pruners, large pruners are way too large. And when you're doing more than just a few, your hands get very tired. Okay, so get yourself some smaller ones and look for them. All right, little sharpening stones. They're all different kinds. 
what you want to do is only the sharp needs to be sharp. This is only a guard. This is where the sharp edge is right here. And you do it at the same angle that it is sharpened. Just slowly go across it a few times. And that's all you need to do. And then it's sharp again. After you prune about three or four roses, uh, you need to sharpen it a little bit. This is my favorite sharpening tool. You can get this at the beauty shop. It's a diamond file. And you do the same thing, only it's nice and small. Same thing. You can carry it with you. You don't have to be running back to your garage. I carry it right in here. Okay. It's a myth that you need to sanitize or sterilize. There is no such thing. Uh, your pruners. Certainly, please don't use Clorox. You'll end up like this. You need to take care of your roses, but you, you of your pruners, but you don't need to sanitize or sterilize in between. That's just a myth. If you just clean in between, that's good enough. Okay, I think I've gone through all of this. Oh, you need, well, you see what I'm carrying here. Uh, when you have some canes that are crossing over and you don't want to be pruning it too far down, you can tie it to a stake or tie it to each other and uh, get them out of the way until they're starting to uh, sprout out. And uh, then uh, you can um, uh, take this, the uh, uh, tie off. With the climbing roses, you definitely need to tie them down to a support. There is no such thing as a climbing rose that they have. It's not like ivy where they can hold on to something. You have to tie them down to make them look like climbing roses. Okay. I'm going to try and get to a climber here uh, when we're done. This is a shrub rose. It's actually a mini flora rose, diamond eyes. It's a gorgeous small rose. A mini flora rose is right in between a miniature rose and a floribunda rose. There are several different varieties, many different varieties of roses. Um, miniatures, mini floras, floribundas, hybrid teas, climbing roses, and on and on and on. But uh, I won't go into that because we're here for pruning. The roses will continue, even if you don't prune, they will continue to uh, uh, grow. They have little buds right here. Wherever there was a leaf, there is a new bud. Right, This is a new bud. This is a new bud. There is, I don't see one right here. Oh, here, if you can get close to this. There is a, a little line right underneath it is where the leaf was attached at one time. And wherever that was, there's a new bud growing out. So look for that. If there is no leaf there, look for that little line and you can see wow. that there's a bud there. And it goes into this direction. The next one goes in the other direction. And this goes this direction. So all the way down the line. And wherever that direction goes, that's where the next stem is going to grow and your next flower is going to grow. Okay, so this rose bush that is up here is not the same rose bush that is down here. It was budded onto an old garden rose that is very vigorous. They use it as rootstock. And that vigor is going to be transposed into this top one. So they're growing little stems of these old garden roses, and then they cut them off and they take a little bud like this, they gouge it out and they attach it to that new stem. 
and that's eventually going to start right in here. So if you see a new growth going further away from here, it's coming from the roots and you don't want to let that go because I've heard so many times, my pink rose all of a sudden has two colors. It has a red one and it has a pink one. Well, you don't get too excited about it because that red one is going to take over and you're going to lose that pink one because it's very vigorous. So you want to get rid of that. You can go down and get rid of the soil and look down and gouge it out. You prune it out, guess what happens? It's going to get stronger. So that's bush number one. You want to get rid of all of this. I have to, what did I do with my, I have to use gloves. I am so used to gloves. First thing you need to do is buy gloves. You need to get rid of everything that is covering. I can put that on here, right? Mm -hmm. Your bud union. You want to see where these canes are coming from. When we prune, we take an established bush about a third, a quarter to a third down. But all these dead canes, crossing over canes, need to come out. When we prune, this is a good example. This is a strong cane. And there is the next cane coming out is smaller than this. And the next cane after that is smaller than that. And so on, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And eventually, if we let this little one go, there's going to be a smaller than this cane. And a bloom, if there is going to be a bloom, is so weak that it just hangs down and possibly even breaks off. That's why we're pruning to a stronger cane so that the next cane will be very strong and hold those canes with the blooms on it so much better. We need to look to see where the canes come from. Are they healthy? This is a dead cane already. And right down here, it's gone all the way down into this original cane. So that dead cane when it was pruned here, was dying back all the way, all the way, all the way down. And we're going to lose a beautiful cane. What they should have done is cut to an eye. There was no eye here where they pruned. The next eye was here. They should have pruned it here, but it was pruned wrong. So. It died back and nobody took care of it. Nobody looked at it and it kept dying back and dying back and dying back. And that's how you lose a king. So you need to look at your roses and visit them every single day. They love to see you. They love to greet you. And how else are you going to know what they need and what they are going to do next? Enjoy your roses. That's why you're growing them. Okay, can we start? All right. First of all, you need this is nice that we can turn this around and, and uh, I don't have to get down on my knees to uh, prune to see which canes are viable, which are good. We have several good canes. Some of them they're already dying back that. Again, it was pruned wrong and it's dying back. If we don't take care of this cane, it's going to start dying back. Eventually these canes will die and we're going to have a problem. So we're going to take care of that. It's a mini flora, it's a smaller rose, um, sort of, like I said, between a miniature small rose and a mini flora rose. So they finally brought those roses out. They're gorgeous. Well, first of all, take care of the, the dead roses. I'm going to have to do this kind of backwards here. This is totally dead and we go all the way down here, but I'm gonna turn this around because I wanna go very flush with that. 
Okay. Did you see that? Very flush. Okay. There is, this is a dead one. We'll go down to here and see whether the inside is still viable. I'm just going to go down. Well, you can see it's already dying back. Even though it has a cane, it's already dying back all the way down to here. It's all brown down to here. Um, whoever's going to get this rose bush, well, will give it the benefit of the doubt, but I doubt if it's going to survive very long. We'll leave it there for the time being. Remember, when you take it off, you can't put it back. So if in doubt, leave it and you can always come back. There's a little bitty stump right in the middle here. I'm gonna to need to take that out and we're going to go flush. Flush is when we go next to the cane like that. This one here has already died all the way down. This is dead. It's all the way down to here and we're going flush again. There you go. There are lots and lots of buds that we can't see right around in here. And we're going to get new growth coming out of that. We still have, oh, there's one more that needs to come out. And we're going to go at an angle. We're not going to go straight across like that. We always go at an angle the way the cane grows or the way the bud grows. Let's see how far this has gone down. Oh dear. It's Again, we're leaving this for the benefit of the doubt because it's still, the inside is kind of, uh, it should be completely white, but it isn't. This one is sort of weak and it's in the middle. So we're going to take that out as well. There. Now, there is more here. Oh, it's already breaking off. And it's, the cane is coming from way down here. It's a very strong cane. And we can take it down to here, take that little stump off. But look what's happening here. There's new growth coming out already. So take a look and don't just look at the top, look all the way down, see what the future holds. This one will not do anything. There's nothing here that will activate it. So we'll just take it to there. And you can see I did the same angle as the cane grows, the same angle. And we're going to cut this one about here. We can always go back and do further. So that little eye here tells me it wants to go this way. We go about a quarter of an inch on top of it, not underneath it, on top of it, so it'll stay. And it's the angle of that bud that tells you how you want to cut it. If it goes in this direction, the bud is at the high point, we can go this way and do that the same way. But this is growing this way, so we'll let him go. There's all kinds of room there to grow. Okay, let's see what else do we have. Oh, this poor little thing here. I talk to my roses. I hope you talk to your roses as well. They love to hear your voice. There we go. And there is one butt going this way, which is fine. Remember, if I went up higher, it gets thinner. I mean, might just as well just go all the way down to here. Again, there's all kinds of butts right in here. And this is way down. This is a very strong cane. So if these butts don't activate, this one will and this one will. So you can rub these off, let the next one go, but this one grows to the inside. You can rub that one off and let this one grow. This one is going to the outside, so it's even further down. 
You control what your roses are doing. You're in charge, though they'd like to think they are. Okay, we're doing fine. We're going to about here. That doesn't mean that every cane is going to be in this direction. That means we could just cut it straight across, but that's not what we're doing. Each cane is different. Go one cane at a time. We've already started on this one here. Remember that had a very dead cane right there. There's an outside facing eye right here. And this is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So we'll try and get that. Again, it's an outside facing eye. Look to the future. This has lots of room to grow right here. The next one is right here. There's lots of room to grow right here. Think of what comes next. This one is sort of turning to the inside. If you have a bush that grows next to a walkway, you want to keep that walkway clear. You don't want to be growing to the outside into the walkway because people will be snagging on onto the rose bush. So you want to keep sort of going towards the, in, even if it goes towards the inside of the, of the bush, but you want to go sort of towards that because you want to keep that walkway clear. Maybe you want to go, instead of going straight in like this one here, you want to go sort of sideways or going in that direction. But know where the next one goes. Always look ahead. This one here, it's like, again, like I said, it's, well, let's do this one here. It's kind of thin, but we may go back later and see what happens. You can always go back and prune some more. Hey, Rose, can I ask a question? Yes. So we have a couple of questions posted so far. I figure while you're working through this, maybe you can speak to them. Um, Absolutely. One of them is that, you know, it's been rain and then sun and cool weather and then sun. And so there's a lot of roses that are already starting to leaf out, um, yes. even though technically this is the time of year to be trimming and pruning back. Um, what do you do with, what do you do with um, branches that already have leaves started on them? You prune. Um, I have this bush right here. It's a brand new bush and look at how it's already going out. But you have to control where it goes. Some of these are going to the inside. You don't want that. You want it to go to the outside. Though it's, if it's higher up on the cane, then it's going to go straight up. It's always going to go straight up. Right here, even though it's growing out, we want to cut that off. And this, let's see, where was it? Here. Even though this is already going to go growing, this one is the one that we want. So we go and prune it. It's okay to take it off. That's why we're saying this is the most dormant. The roses are going to be around this time, December, January, February. Um, sometimes you still have blooms. Uh, sometimes I just leave the one bloom and let it go, but it's never going to do very much. It's just, I can't cut off a bloom. <laughs> so, uh, but you need to prune about this time. The longer you wait, the weather is going to get um, warm again and it's going to push out. It's, you need to get to it as, just as soon as you can because the weather is going to get warmer now. And you know, with our climate getting warmer, the roses really never stop growing. We right. don't have four seasons. We have actually just one season. So we need to tell the roses, hey, it's time to sort of hold it a little bit and we'll get them a little bit stronger. And that's why we're pruning. And there's no reason to be concerned about pruning, like even during the rainy period, right? Like, oh, no. Okay. If you want to be out in the rain, go ahead. 
<laughs> but them getting wet and getting rained on after a cut is not a problem, right? No, no, it doesn't make any difference. Okay. It doesn't make any difference. Okay. And the other question I have right now is that as you're pruning these down and as you're talking about them, you're getting fewer and fewer larger canes at the bottom. Is that kind of the purpose is to have not a, you know, not a ton of of the full size, you know, thick um, original cane and having more branching and fullness up at the top? Or, or is it just that particular rose that we've been looking at? You want to generate as much as you can from the bottom up to get stronger canes. These canes eventually are going to get old. So eventually you're going to have to get rid of them. But if you don't have any new canes, guess what? You're not going to get any blooms. So what you're forcing them is to force, when you're pruning, it says, oh no, oh no, I need to force, I need, I need, I need. And the bush is sort of going into a shock. Uh, it's, it's okay to put them in a shock like that because it's telling them I need to regenerate. And that's what we want. We want to regenerate. Perfect. And we want to regenerate strong kings. Did I answer that? Yes, you did perfectly. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. Okay, so we still have a few canes to go. There are outside facing eyes on, not this one here, but these are just really, really small. And there's an outside facing eye right here. So we'll just take that and we'll just let that go. There's plenty of room right here for it to grow. If this one grows, well, it will, and it grows inside and it's interfering with something. If it doesn't go straight up like this, we can always rub it off. Okay, there's a good outside facing eye right here. This is really small. We might go down even a little bit more later. But like I said, can't put it back. And already this is getting kind of small, but this is a nice, very strong cane. So we'll go down to here and we can do this one right here. There's lots of room right here for it to grow. So we'll let it grow right here. We can go straight here and this one is going to activate. We could actually take it down to here, but that's getting down a little bit too far. And if it doesn't do what you want it to do, go back and prune it. You can't kill it by pruning. Most people are so afraid that I'm not doing it right. I, I don't know how to do it, so I won't do it. Do it, do it. I love to prune, I love to prune. Okay. This one right here has many small little growths up in here, but there is a nice, strong eye right here and there's lots of room right here for it to grow so we're going to just take it down it's okay there we are and this one right here has one that grows in a perfect well yeah might as well let's see we left this one here we left this one here we can let this one, no, no, we'll go. My first impulse. I do this all the time. Do I, don't I, do I, don't I? If in doubt, let it be, can always go back and prune it later. And there is lots of room for it to grow right here. And this one can be facing in that direction. Oh. How is that? We're done on this one right here. Now, you need to take all the debris, everything off. This one didn't have any leaves left. Usually you have some leaves left. If there are still some leaves in here, you need to take those leaves off. Those are old and they're holding the diseases. So you don't want those diseases to go onto the new growth. So you wanna take all of the leaves off and this is what the new bush prune should look like. Any questions? I know this is kind of 
interfering right here, but I would put a stake right in here and tie it so it doesn't go interfere. Remember, this is going in this direction. So if we stake that and put it this way or tie it to something, then it's out of the way. Uh, I had a question uh, the other day. What if the eye faces down? Well, that's okay, because some of the eyes will be facing down. The growth always goes to the top. So it'll go from the bottom, it'll start growing up like this. So don't worry about it if you have to prune to a, a, an eye that's facing down, it's perfectly okay. If it faces in the direction that you want it, eventually that'll be fine. Any other questions? I have one. Uh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Taylor, go ahead. Right, you go next, but uh, what's the difference between you're saying, I think you were saying gouging out the bottom branches from the rootstock versus pruning, what would be gouging? Okay, gouging is you wanna go down. It's okay if you hurt some of these uh, roots, you go all the way down and see where it's coming from. And you wanna take it and gouge it out. You wanna hurt it so that it doesn't regrow. If you go down and cut it, it'll do the same thing that we do up here. It'll become stronger. So you need to gouge it out. You need to pull it out. Mm -hmm. Does that yeah. make sense? Mm -hmm. Explain it? Okay. If you hurt some of these roots, that's fine. It's, they're going to regenerate. Roses are survivors. They have been growing for millions of years. We just think we need to baby them, but uh, they don't need to be babied. Did okay, you have one, have that. Yeah, I have a couple of questions too. I'm trying to figure out what makes the most sense. Um, you were pulling off some of the leaves, but you were mostly pulling off, we're talking about pulling off older leaves, right? Not any of the new leaves. We're just cutting down to where the new leaves are. Is that what I saw? Okay, if this is already active, if there's new growth right here, that's fine. If there's new growth, oh, well, let's see, right here, that's fine. Let it go because you just want to prune to where you want it to prune. If these eyes have already activated, that's okay. Let them go. Right now, it's, you know, they're starting to push out already. I have this much growth on my, some of the roses that I've pruned already. So, uh, and some of them are, you know, at the top where I haven't pruned, they're already starting out. You wanna get to them as quickly as you can because they're using strength that they could use to activate down here to the ones that are, that are up here. You're going to be pruning that and you're gonna take it away. So they're using the strength to grow up here that you the that you'll be cutting so you want it to get to it as quickly as as possible so they can use that strength somewhere else perfect okay okay i'm going to do a, a climbing rose um, can we have that one thank you to oh, <laughs> oh wow that's a big guy Oh, yeah, it's too tall. We could set it up on this. Yeah. I'm going to take some of this out first. I want to see what's happening around in here. Okay. Take all the weeds out. Weeds are taking strength away and food away from your roses. I think I'm going to put it on the ground. Is it okay? Oh, it be perfect. Let's set it on that. Um, sorry about that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Much better. All right. We'll do this as a climbing rose. Okay. Climbing roses, like I said, they don't have tendrils that they can hang on to stuff. We have to tie them down. And this is already, well, I'm going to take these out because it's.
And a lot of us have climbing roses that came with the house. And they're sort of out of control because we don't know what to do with it. Right? So we're, all right. First of all, we want long canes. The way climbing roses are, they make long canes all the way up to here and then more, longer, longer, longer. But they don't usually bloom down here. Roses go, well, most plants go for ethical dominance. That means the top always gets the most and then they work their way down. If you look at your roses now that uh, haven't, uh, that you haven't pruned, they already are starting at the top. To, even the smallest ones, they're already starting to uh, sprout out. That's because the top gets the most first and then they work their way down. What we want to do with the climbing roses, we want them to be blooming all the way along the way. So by doing this, we're making this look like it's the top. And you will be getting all of these to sprout out. But we have to tie this down somewhere. And usually an arbor or a, a fence, uh, usually a fence where we can tie it down and make it sort of sideways rather than straight up. But we don't want to be cutting these down like we did on the other one because we want these long canes. But we also want some of these laterals because out of here, we're going to get new growth as well. So I'm going to be cutting, let's say this cane is a good cane to do. All right, we'll pretend that this is already tied down like this. What we want to do is we want to let this grow. There's plenty of room here to grow, so let's let it grow. Again, there is nothing here that would activate. This is just a stump. We need to get rid of this flush. This will continue growing. This will start growing. This will start growing. You're going to get blooms out of these. And this we're going to let grow longer. Hey, Taylor, can you zoom in a little bit on where okay. like the, the okay. eye is? Right here is the eye. I'm just going to recut this a little bit because it's sort of there. Okay, Does just, that, yeah, perfect. I, Several people yes. have asked, okay. okay. All okay, right, that's this the is going, we're going to let this grow, continue growing, continue growing, and we're going to get bloom out of here, out of here. There's already a little, I can't, I don't know if you can see, there's a little bud coming out here. There's going to be more here, and this is going to keep growing longer and longer, and we're going to get a bloom out of here, out of all of these buds along in here. Also, right here, even though we're going to cut this flush, there's already new growth here, new growth here. Does that show up? I don't know if I can tell that. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. It shows up perfectly. It's Does just- it show up? Okay. Yeah, we just wanted okay. to make sure we got a picture of the eye. That's uh, awesome. As so we go further down, this is kind of weak still. It still applies. Uh, we want strong canes. This is kind of weak, so we'll cut this down to here, but there's going to be growth here, which will be just a little bit smaller than this cane, but that was a lot smaller. So here we go. There is one coming out in here. We can let that grow. When this is tied down, you can see it's facing kind of down, but it'll grow up like this. This is kind of facing down when this is down like this, but it's going to grow up like this. And there's also going to be growth right in here. Again, this cane here, 
there is new growth coming right here. We're going to leave about two, maybe three, depending on the size, um, new eyes growing. And then we're going to get that many new uh, growth out of here. There's one right in here, two, three. And if these eyes here activate, you'll get even more. Now, go one at a time. This right here is kind of dead. There is, there's nothing here. There's no eye here, nothing at all. It's just there. We're lucky that it hasn't died back yet. So we're going to go in the direction that this cane is growing. And there is new growth in here that can come out. And when it's nice and lateral like this, it's most likely going to be growing. You may even want to cut this down a little bit more so that some of these lower ones will activate and uh, uh, grow. This is the same thing right here. This is going straight up, which is fine. We can do that. We we'll can do it in the same angle as the eye grows. And that comes from way, way down here, which is great because we want basal canes. This is basal canes. All the way from here, there'll be growth here, there'll be growth here, all kinds of growth if we keep this lateral. If we cook it straight up, we're still going to get growth, but it's mostly up in here. What we want is for the growth to come down here. Remember, it's going to get larger because. This cane is larger. This cane is smaller than this one. Okay. So if we get growth out of here, it's going to be just a little bit smaller than this. But if we let this to grow, it's going to get smaller than this. So we can actually cut these down and let some of these grow. Okay. This one here doesn't look too healthy. It has tiny, tiny little growth right in here. Nothing happened here. Nothing happened here. Nothing happened here. Um, we have enough growth so we can take this all the way down here. There is, there's a little thing here. There is all kinds of growth here and we can just take that out and let the rest of it go. Oops, see, it's already starting to break. Let's see if I can get to it. There. Okay. And there's a new one coming, and that's really nice. Okay, even though this is a long one, it's kind of thin. It's thinner and really old down here. And this one is much stronger here. You can see the difference, it's thin. This one has come right out of here and it's much stronger. So that came out of that same one. All right, so we've done this one here. What about this one here? It's kind of thin, but it's all right. We can take the real thin one here that didn't do anything. We'll take it here. And this one is dead. This one didn't do anything. And this one didn't do anything. It's just there. This doesn't have anything. And we're just going to let this grow. There is an eye right here. When we do this, take that one out as well then hopefully all of these lower ones, which are of course going to get a little bit smaller than this. And we'll just let this be tied down and bring these up rather than the top one. So we've done these two and you go cane by cane by cane. Are there any questions on the climbing roses? I always have lots of questions on climbing roses. Um, I haven't had any, a bunch specifically about climbing. I think that your explanation is kind of answering everything. I think the questions are really, um, 
you know, what if you've allowed like pruning to pass a, a year or some change and they've gotten really leggy and then, you know, how far then do you prune back? And if you've got these older canes and most of the eyes are, you know, way out at the tips, you know, then if you're cutting them back, how do you how do you save enough of the the eyes to be able to get new growth? Okay. I'm sorry, that was kind of two questions. No, but that's, that's okay. I need sorry. to explain something. An old cane, this is the one that came off of right down here. Um good canes have a big white center a big white center, new canes. As they get older, they get smaller and smaller. Yeah, let me hold on to that. They get smaller and smaller. See how small it is right there? The tiny, it's tiny instead of, let's see, we'll see this one here. Okay, see, there's only a tiny little dot here. There isn't a whole lot of nutrients that are going through there. This is getting further and further down, way down. This is where we cut it off. It's an old, old cane. And when you uh, remember that the top wasn't really doing very much because there wasn't a whole lot of nutrients going through from the bottom going up. So you need to look, start cutting from the top down and see how big the center growth is. On the old, old roses that have been in there like 30, 40, 50 years, you want to be careful not to take all of those canes down because all of those canes are kind of old already. So you want to leave some of those nutrients going in Take one cane at a time, take it one, take one big one this year, take another one next year if it has regenerated. If not, you're hoping for the best that maybe the top will still generate some of the new, some uh, new roses. But okay. um, you need to be careful with the old, old roses that have been in the ground for too long uh, that, that haven't been pruned, that are just sort of there. If they are not working, if they're not producing, you want to spend all that time babying them and giving them food and giving them water, precious water, um, when you can take it out, replace it with a brand new bush that will give you tons of roses. So it's... You know, don't leave them in the ground if you can replace it. It's that's I mean, it's great advice. And it's not something that you hear often from somebody like yourself that is so learned and has had so much experience with this. So often people are like, no, I have to hang on to it forever. But it is good. advice. Don't, don't hang on to them. Don't. I've done this when I first started growing roses. I I was crying over when they died. Well, now I'm kind of happy if they die because then I can replace it with a new one. <laughs> I'm My yard is full of roses. I grow over 400 roses and I'm at the max. I can't put any more in. If somebody dies, I'm happy because I like some of the new roses and I can replace it and I can buy a new rose bush. Absolutely. So, uh, do that and don't baby them if they only have one cane left and... and Get rid of it. Redo the soil and put a new bush in there. Perfect. What I do recommend is though, grow a new rose bush. If you buy a new rose bush, put it in a, in a pot and grow it for a year in the pot. See how it does. If it doesn't do well in your climate, in your garden, grow it for two years. If it doesn't do well, give it to a neighbor, give it to a friend, and I guarantee you it does much better there. And you can buy another one that will do well in your garden. 
That's great advice. It's One last thing while you're working on the climbing roses. I know with the bush roses, you did a lot of pruning out of like the crossing canes, but the, you know, the whole point with the climbing roses is that you have all those canes coming out and that they're nice and full and even at the bottom. So is it okay to have some of the crossing canes on climbing roses? Sometimes you have to cross them way down here. Okay, like this one right here. We're going to keep this one here. Oh, come on. This one right here. We're going to keep this one. But this one is sort of crossing over. What you can do is get rid of the thorns that would rub up against it. They'll never miss it. It's okay. So in case that it does rub, it won't be rubbing and injuring the cane. There's a there. Okay. So it's not injuring it. And again, this one here, the top had flowers and they just cut it. But there was nothing there to regenerate. So there is one right here. And we're going to let this one grow. See, that's not a good cut. All right, don't hang on to me. There. And we're going to be tied. This is going to be tied here. This is going to be tied here. So they're not interfering with each other. This will grow before these will grow if it's tied like this. Okay, this will be tied over this way. So they're out of each other's way. And then some of these will be tied to the other direction so they don't interfere. Okay, I'm gonna go over to the other side. There is lots of interfering right here. This is why I wear gloves. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> and even with gloves, I recommend when you go out in the yard that you take some Band-Aids with you. Because mm -hmm. even when you wear gloves, you get um, the thorns coming through. All right. Same thing on this side. This is nothing happening here. So we're going to be cutting this. And this is... Further down, this is more of a main cane coming from here. And we're going to let this one grow. Now, there is a leaf right here. And there is going to be a bud right underneath here. See that bud right there? See that bud right there? Can you see it? Let me see. Let me put this behind it. OK. That's where the leaf just came out. That's of. where the leaf just came off of. And there's a little line right underneath it where every leaf was. So we're going to be cutting it right there and letting this grow longer. And the same on this one right here. There was a leaf here. There's a bud right there. And we're going to let this grow longer. Well, if this grow longer, this is a nice strong cane. And we're going to get new growth coming out of all of these. Right out of here. Right out of here. I'm going to be cutting this. This is blank. There is nothing there. But this is the next bud. So we're going to let this grow. We're going to cut these just if there's really nothing here. And there's nothing here. And this will be fine. This is a cane that's sort of dead already we're going there's a nice strong cane that came out of here and this is the very strong cane that came way out of here so we can take this one totally off and it won't interfere here this is just a little stub that we can get rid of this is going to be growing here nice strong cane the further down these canes are strong, the more we want to let them grow. 
We don't want just one straight long one. We can want some laterals in here as well. Okay, so this one here will be tied in this direction. And there's still a leaf here. We can take that leaf off. There is a bud right in here that uh, that can grow. The same with this cane here. This is going to be tied here. This is going to be tied here. And it's sort of in different uh, stages. This can go here. It's nice when you can just go all the way around rather than having to climb on a ladder, which you probably would do, but be very careful. Be very secure. When you're in the garden, be so careful because there is so many ways that you can get hurt. I always take my cell phone with me just in case uh, I need to make an emergency call. But you need to be very careful. You are much more important than all the roses in the world. So be very careful. When you climb up on the ladder, make sure the ladder is very secure. Okay. All right. There is this we've already done here. Let me try and get this out of the way here. All right, there is, okay, this one here is nice and strong. And this one can still get stronger. Eventually, the canes will get thicker. Let me turn this around. But we lose the perspective. Okay, so these are going to be here and here. And ah. okay, this is a nice strong cane coming way down here. This is a nice strong cane coming from way down here. This one really doesn't need to be there because we're going to get nice strong growth right from here. We can take this off altogether. And there's going to be new growth in here. This cane is nice and strong. So we can take those little ones off because it was supporting all that little growth here. And how is that one doing? That looks pretty good. Just taking those steps. We're cleaning up right now. And Hey, Rose, most of our um, questions at this point are really geared more towards like feeding and soil and spraying okay. during dormancy. Okay. Kind of diseases. When, okay. When you're done pruning, we don't need to finish this. When you're done pruning, you want to clean up your garden. You want to get rid of all the debris, all of the dead leaves that are on here all the dead leaves that are on, all the leaves that are on here. Unless the top has already started, you know, where you, where you pruned, um, all of this is going to be coming off. So now is not the time to feed chemicals. Now is the time to feed your soil. You want organics to go into your soil. You want um, manure, you want uh, guamo, you want um, anything that will feed your soil. You feed your soil, you feed your roses because roses are plants, are incredible. They make their own food. They manufacture the food from the chemicals. I know chemical is a, a, a dirty word that people don't want to use, but we are made of chemicals, so chemicals is what we are. They use the chemicals, the basic chemicals they need in the ground, bring it in here, and then when they have leaves, there is still plenty of food in, in these canes to manufacture their leaves. Once they have their leaves, they can make their own food. They use the sunshine 
and they use the chemicals from the ground and they make their own food. We can't do that, but the plants can do that. So we need to feed our soil so we can feed our roses. Right now, the chemicals, if you use like miracle Grow, it's strictly chemical. There's, you're not feeding your soil with that. You're, that's just strictly chemicals. The, so, the, the moisture will dissolve those chemicals and bring it up into, but there's nothing there to use it up with. So you're just wasting it. You want to use the natural ingredients that take time to break down in the soil and the bacteria that are in the soil will help break down all of that chemical and make it available to the roots and for the roots to bring it up into the soil. Did I make that clear? Absolutely. Yeah, Taylor, can you can you help her um, Rose get that the climbing rose out of the way just so that we can see some of the products that she's yes. talking about and kind of get into some of the fertilizing and soils and and again, you know, some of the things that specifically affect okay. roses, um, you know, the powdery mildew, some of the rust. Just what are your recommendations? Okay. For I do not spray. I haven't sprayed for about ten years. It took about three to four, maybe five years for the plants to catch on and say, hey, you're not protecting us. Maybe we should do this ourselves. So they started doing it themselves. I still get black spot, I get rust. Not so much mildew anymore for some reason, but they don't die. Like I said, I grow, I grow them plant uh, pot to pot. They're close together. So they've decided maybe they should do something themselves. If we protect them too much, it's like a child. If we put a, a cage around them so they can't fall down and, and uh, scrape their knee and, and break an arm or whatever, um, they'll never learn. So we, we protect them way too much. Roses, like I said, have been around for thousands, millions of years, and they can survive. If we protect them too much, then they become weaker and weaker and weaker. Now the, the hybridizers have caught on, and they are now introducing roses that are very disease resistant. So spraying is little by little going by the wayside. And I'm happy that I have stopped spraying because I'm seeing more and more birds, butterflies, um, and critters coming to the yards. Uh, and that's what we want because they're the ones that are taking care of all of this odd stuff, like caterpillars and, and, and uh, all of that. I talk to my birds and I tell them, hey, you know, if there are aphids there, you better go get them. And I haven't had aphids for a long time because they, my birds are feeding on them. So we need to support nature to support itself. Um, fertilizing. This kelp is definitely wonderful. Alfalfa pellets without molasses. Um, all the fertilizers have numbers on them. This doesn't look like a rose fertilizer, does it? But you can use it because it has numbers on them. 16, 16, 16, which is fine. That means 16% nitrogen, 16% phosphorus, 16% uh, potassium. That is the basic, but there are many new, uh, minor nutrients and, and micronutrients that are still in the soil. You can use any fertilizer as long as you know what the numbers are. The first number is for the leaves. It supports the leaves. 
nitrogen is good because right now we don't have any leaves. We want to push leaves. We would need new leaves. Once the new leaves are there, they're starting to use that nitrogen and they're going to really manufacture food. Then they'll go into phosphorus, which will be for canes and will also support the roots. And of course, the potassium will definitely go into the roots. So know what you want. Later in the year, when we're trying to sort of stop them from really producing a lot, like in September, October, November, we don't want to feed them nitrogen anymore because we don't want them to be pushing out a whole lot of leaves. Because guess what? In January, we're going to take them down anyway. So know what you're feeding. Look for those numbers on any of the fertilizers. Every fertilizer has them in the same number, the same uh, order. And that's what you want to be looking for. Okay, This is my go-to uh, fertilizer when I fertilize. Right now, this is what I use, Maxi. It has a lot of organics in it. And I use alfalfa pellets. I've just uh, picked them up from the feed store. God, have they become expensive? But uh, <laughs> hey, you know, it's a hobby, right? When you play golf, it gets expensive too. So it's our hobby and uh, that's what we do. Um, put them on the ground and just sort of scratch them in. The micro, the, uh, um, for nutrients, what I wanted to say, the uh, bacteria in the ground will pull them in. They will do all of that needs to be done. Any questions so far? Uh, you're getting most of them. We were talking, uh, a couple of the questions were just about the numbers. And I'm glad that you said that, that you said that it doesn't have to have their picture on the front. We say all the time, kind of jokingly, you know, plants can't read. They don't know that the, you know, what, what it's called isn't specific to them. So that's, that's awesome that you're putting that out there again. Um, one of the things that you mentioned was, you know, paying attention to those numbers. Yes. And we talk a lot about, you know, not pushing a lot of nitrogen during dormant season, just so that they're not leafing out the way that they, you know, would be if you're giving them a lot of nitrogen. Um, and that we tend to use ultra bloom or something like that, that's higher in phosphorus and potassium, like you mentioned. But you want to use that later in the year. Right. You don't want to use that now. What, what is the best uh, thing to use at this point in their kind of journey this time of year? A high nitrogen uh, food. The first number is the largest number. The second and third number are smaller. So if we were going to be just, you know, kind of providing nutrients, things like like phosphorus and potassium. So then later in the year when they're about to yeah. go dormant? Okay. Because they do need those as well but not as much right now as they need nitrogen. Perfect. Yeah. But like I said, um, manures, chicken, guano, rabbit, alfalfa, all of that can go in now because it takes time to break down. And by the time it the leaves are in here and they really need to produce, then uh, that's when uh, uh, it's all ready for them. And later, when uh, you have good growth on them already, then you can use your your chemical fertilizers, like oh Peters or Miracle Grow, or uh, even use that later. Osmocote. Um, I get questions on osmocote. I don't use osmocote. Uh, in fact, I still have osmocote in the soil. Um, it takes seventy five degrees for it to break down osmocote in the soil. We don't get that in our Bay Area here. Over in the Valley, yes, um, Pleasanton, they get these hot temperatures and that, yes, those break down there. But right out here on the coast, we don't. So I don't recommend using it on the coast, but definitely use it in uh, inland because that is a time release fertilizer. If you take a look at it, it has different sizes pellets and they break open at different times. 
so that if there's always a little bit fertilizer in the soil for them. Perfect. So I hear a lot. I mean, we were just doing a webinar, I don't know, a week or so ago, we were talking also about pruning and it was for citrus and the um, speaker was saying that they really love Epsom salt for outdoor gardening and fertilizing. Does that work for roses? Uh, Do you have any interest or any, you know, background with it? Yes. Um, in most areas, there is plenty of that in the soil still. And if you overuse it, you're poisoning your soil. So be very careful. Get a soil test. And if it says, yes, you need that, then by all means use it. But most of the time, they do not recommend that because there is still plenty in the soil. Okay, fair enough. Be very careful with that because you can put too much of that stuff into your soil and wondered why the roses are having problems. Right. So be careful with that. Okay. Yeah. Um, a lot of these home remedies, be careful because unless you've had a soil test and you know what these home remedies are doing, what the breakdown is, um, you you want to be careful because you know chemicals are chemicals and, and they'll stay in the soil for a while. So if you're poisoning them and, and uh, then wonder why your roses are not doing well, then that's because you've given them something that they have trouble getting rid of that they don't really need. So read your roses, look at them and, and don't overdo it. You know, give them what they need, but don't overdo it. Um, a little bit is good, a whole lot is not good. That seems like that's good advice for lots of things and certainly yes. lots of plants. <laughs> um, I think we've got most of the questions. Let me just make sure here. I have a, one kind of uh, last one or one near the end to ask about is um, it's going back to like this class about pruning. We have right now, we're doing a lot of our larger pruning to really bring it down after our winter season. Is there another time or two in the year that we should look at smaller prunings or other kind of pruning times throughout yes. the year? Usually summer pruning. Uh, when it gets too hot, the roses start shutting down because they don't want to lose all of their resources. So you can prune, summer prune a little bit. You don't want to have the roses look like this or take off any of the leaves. The leaves need to stay on because that's what they're manufacturing their food with. But uh, you can prune them down a little bit, get rid of some of the old thin wood that uh, you really don't need that isn't really producing and just cut it down a little bit and be careful. But uh, yes, you can do that in the summer. And then in, oh, let's say end of August, September, it's um, they're going to start all up again. Don't forget that roses bloom in cycles. So it takes time for them to regenerate. Um, it uh, Their first flush of bloom is always the best, but uh, then that stops and it takes about five to six weeks in the cooler area to regenerate new growth. So be patient. Again, patient. really good <laughs> advice for lots of family <laughs> growth. One thing I want to uh, stress as well is to protect yourself. There is There are all kinds of bacteria in the soil that are not good for us. So, and you are getting scratched and you can't help that because you just have openings in your skin. Make sure you're up on your tetanus shot. If you haven't had a tetanus shot in a long time, get a booster shot because you want to be protected. That is not something that you want to get, believe me. So um, protect yourself at all times. Again, good advice. Um, let me yeah. just check the questions really quick, make sure we've hit everything. I think that we're good. I mean, uh, I've had a lot of people asking, um, you know, you mentioned that you don't use any kind of spray or anything like that on your roses and that you haven't for years and that you've been kind of training them to, um, but if you know. But you want to spray, uh, use a dormant spray now when the roses are like this. 
right. actually uh, they are already starting to sprout out and be very careful because dormant spray can burn the new buds. So what I would recommend is using a regular garden spray now as a cleanup in a, uh, uh, this week and next week in two weeks and maybe even a third week to clean up whatever you have. Um, and then just go on the, um, like whatever they say, every 10 days, every 14 days, whatever right. after, interval after that. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you already have growth and even some of them already have little leaves, I would not recommend a dormant spray. Okay, that's perfect. It's, it's funny right. because, you know, with climate change and the way that our weather patterns have been different, it used to be that January was, you know, the coldest time of the year. Yes. And that's when so much pruning took place. And most and everything have... was, yeah, totally bare, you know, during that time. And, you know, this is the perfect example. What you're saying is that, you know, a lot of our roses, even our dormant roses that just came, you know, not even a month ago, they're already leafing uh, out. And you can yeah. see how, how much they've sprouted out already. Exactly, exactly. And these are brand new roses. And can I just real quickly say something about these roses. I pulled that from your stock. This is how you buy the new roses. Or we'll just put it right on top here. This is by what the roses look like when you buy the new roses. At where the growers, these are grown in the ground. This is a two year old bush. They go with these big machines across and cut. They don't care whether it's an outside facing eye, inside facing eye or whatever. They just go straight across. When these roses start pushing out, the first one, like remember I said, the top always gets the first. The top one starts activating. Well, it just goes helter skelter every which way. So there are going to be stumps when you buy these roses. What you want to do is, what did I do with my hair? What you want to do is prune to the next feasible eye that you want to keep. And in this case, it would be this one right here. See how big that is, the inside? That's a brand new cane. And we'll do the same on all of the canes. This is so this okay. is right after buying right. it. <laughs> That's when you buy this. This You come home, take this home from the nursery. And this is what you need to do. This is going to go straight up. They're going to go straight up. There's nothing to interfere here. This one you might want to take out. This is what I say, finger pruning. You just pull that one out because this one here is going in a good direction. Okay. This one we already did. And... There is still one more that's a stump. You see how it was pruned here? We'll just cut that. And this is what your rose bush should look like before you plant it. Nice. Okay. Taking it home from the nursery, you need to recut where, wherever there was a big stump that they left from the growers. Okay. So this is a very good bush, actually. There's lots and lots of rows. Okay. Oh, All right. No, I mean, it's and nice. One other thing. Don't throw the names away, please. <laughs> you would like to be addressed by your name, don't you? The roses do too. And how else are you going to know when you'll be pruning next year, which rose you're pruning? Is it a hybrid tea? Is it a florabunda? Is it a miniature? Is it a climbing rose? Okay. So keep those roses. These are inexpensive to buy. Put the name of the rose on there. And a lot of times I just use this name tag, take it off and just attach it to the top right there. This is from the growers. They'll tell you all that you need to know.